Hi, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. I'm very excited that you've decided to spend the next 20 minutes with me on this talk. Today, we'll talk about Kafka real-time data streaming for network engineers. So first of all, who is this guy on the screen talking to me? Hello, my name is Eric. Very nice to meet you. I'm a principal engineer at A10 Networks, and I've been in the networking industry for over the last 20 years. Been working in service provider, public cloud provider, enterprise. And I'm excited and passionate about network engineering, Python, education, and also writing. So, what will we cover today? Um, basically, Kafka is a beast to learn, but um, what we'll cover today are uh, you know, hopefully in the short 20 minutes is what is Kafka and what problem does Kafka solve? How does Kafka solve those problems? And how can we leverage Kafka as well as some demonstration and also next steps? They may not be in that exact order, but those are the big topics that I wish to cover today. And also, just as a reminder, because we have a short time frame, so all of the examples and code are all, um, all available after the talk for you to watch on this GitHub repository, as well as links to the demo videos. So what is Apache Kafka? Uh, Apache Kafka is a framework implementation of a software bus you, for uh, using stream processing. And this project aims to provide a unified high throughput, late, low latency platform for handling real-time data feeds. So there are several keywords in that statement such as real-time data, it's in a unified location, so basically it's in the same location for all parties to talk to, and also it's high throughput and low latency. Those are very tall orders to, for a project to achieve. So let's see how Kafka does these. Well, first of all, who uses Kafka? You know, before we dive into the technical details, it's always comforting to know that you're not alone, and because of so many large companies such as LinkedIn, Netflix, as well as Cisco uses Kafka, the development will continuously to evolve and also kept up with the latest changes. Um, it is said that over 2,000 plus firms uses Kafka as well as 35% of the Fortune 500 companies. And chances are, even if they're not using Kafka, they're probably thinking about it. And one thing that you'll know is these companies are tend to be data-driven, uh, user-facing, web applications, and they're very sensitive to data loss, very low tolerance for data latency as well. So what is the background and history of Kafka? So Kafka is originally developed by Jay, John, and Niha uh, back in 2008 while they were working at LinkedIn. And this was open source in 2011. And if you're wondering about the name Kafka, it's actually named after the author Franz Kafka. Uh, it was said to, uh, it was said that Jay was a fan of the author, and the author has a system that optimized for writing. So he created the system that's optimized for data streaming and data processing. The tool itself, the core, is written in Java, but they have client libraries in uh, Python, GoLang, .NET, and so on. And the founders uh, went on to uh, co-found this startup called Confluent, and therefore a lot of the a lot of the development and the ecosystem projects are sponsored by Confluent. So, what problem does Kafka try to solve? So, imagine this: you have a web service; it's providing some user uh, some information to the user, and it talks to the backend database, and that's all fine. Um, but then the user starts to request more information that may or may not live in in the database. So you start making backend calls to another API, web services display back to the user, and your application grows. The users uh, thrill about it, but also you need to provide those information to other computer systems. So now you create an API front end uh, for, uh, for your web app, and now the list just goes on and on. You need to make additional web API calls. Somebody is calling your services more, and now you just have this jumbo of mash of services between people calling your service and you calling other services. Um, this becomes a uh, really hard integration problem, and 
just one service, right? In the today's world, we have a bunch of microservices that uh, inter interact with each other. So let's just say if you have six talkers with six receivers, that's 36 connections. And each of them, you have to negotiate, you know, what protocol to use. Do you use web uh, REST? Do you use HTTP? Do you just transfer uh, raw data? Or the data format, do you use JSON? Do you use uh, just other formats um, that may or may not be agreed upon between you and the other users? So Kafka is created to solve this problem. And I like this tagline of set data in motion. So how does they, uh, Kafka solve this problem? So basically Kafka solved this problem uh, by being a, a massive buffer in the middle between your application producing the data and your application that are receiving these data. And the system lets you uh, receive and uh, receive and transform this data from your source to your target. And generally referring to the producers, talking to the Kafka cluster and the consumer consume those information. And at the central of it are topics, which we'll talk about. The topics could be anything that you specify and the producer would just write to that topic. You specify to the Kafka cluster and the Kafka cluster will take, uh, will, will be responsible in arranging those uh, data to be written to the right broker uh, or server and to the right topic, to the right petition and so on and so forth. So if you think about Netflix real-time recommendation system or the Uber real-time location tracking and user demand search pricing, those are the kind of uh, data in motion problem that Kafka could solve for you. So this is a pretty dense slide, but bear with me because I promise there'll be more demos later on. Um, before we could dive deeper, we'll probably get uh, more, we need to sort out some of the definitions that we'll talk about. So basically we, in uh, some of the important Kafka concepts and terms, we have events, then events could also be called messages or records. Is it basically just a something that happened like a web click, a BGP neighbor going down, et cetera. Then since Kafka is run as a cluster, then we have sort of the managers, which are called zookeepers, as well as the server themselves that are uh, responsible for storing information and talking to your producers and consumers. Those are called brokers. And then we have these producers and consumers, basically producers write data to the topics and consumer reads those data off the topics. So we talk about topics a little bit. So topics are essentially a category or the name of a feed. And each of these petitions, and, and these, all the, uh, these topics are broken down into petitions. And petitions are spread over different servers or brokers uh, for redundancy and uh, replication. And the offsets are basically just the integer to determine where the consumer are uh, have read those data in because those data would come in in order. And also consumers could form a group. So for redundancy purposes, and Kafka is in charge of determining which consumer have already read the latest message in a consumer group. And lastly, in Kafka, you could decide how many copies of data that you would like to keep. So those are called the replication and you will have replication factors to, for you to decide how many copies of the same data to be kept and uh, that you provide data redundancy, integrity, and so on. So here's a graphical representation of the uh, Kafka cluster. We have the zookeeper that is managing the brokers and uh, within, those broker, uh, within those brokers, you have the topics and within the, the topics, you have each different petitions. And for all intents and purposes, you could think of a cluster as a group of machines and the brokers are physical servers. One broker is one server and together they form the cluster. Of course, for zookeeper, you could have multiple zookeepers for redundancy purposes. And a good example is uh, if you create a topic and you sp specify three uh, partitions and two replications, the root zookeeper will be in charge of uh, which broker to take those petition in and where to where the replication should be done on uh, different physical machines. 
And the best part is Kafka takes care of all of these for you. As a, as a producer, you just use the SDK, write to a topic, and Kafka will be in charge of uh, keeping the data uh, for a, a period of time, uh, being, keeping the data redundant, as well as uh, having the data, uh, having the consumer read the data in order. So here's um, a drill a little deeper into each of the brokers um, in the different topics and partitions. So here we can see that there's a, a, a two topics, topic A and topic B, and each of them with a replication factor of two. So we have two copies of the same data and they're residing on different brokers. So for topic A, you will have a partition zero and that's being replicated on broker two. So uh, if you lose broker one, then the topic A is still safe and so on. So these uh, redundancy and reliability scheme are generally follow the 2N plus one, meaning if you have three brokers, you could uh, tolerate losing one. If you have five, you could tolerate losing two. So the Kafka offset is a number that Kafka uses to make the current position of where the consumer or consumer group have read to. And it is just a pointer, just an integer pointer that points to the last record that Kafka have already sent to a consumer in the most recent poll. And this ensures the consumer does not get uh, the same data or the same record twice. Uh, as mentioned before, this is very important to, to, uh, to make sure the same record is not either not processed or being processed twice. If you think about something like a, a credit card processing, then you could identify with the need to keep a um, integrity of the data per, per topic per consumer group. Okay, so let's look at some demo. As I mentioned before, I put all the useful links and all the example links, uh, screencasts, videos uh, into this GitHub repository. Basically, we're gonna look at First, how to install Kafka getting on the system because we're doing testing. We have uh, the same Zookeeper and um, Kafka into the single server. And we'll look at the installation process and all that. And then we're gonna look at four examples. The first example will be how to create the topic and testing to make sure the topic works. And the second example will be using consumer groups. Uh, so we have multiple consumers in the consumer group and the Kafka will be in charge of low balancing messages between the consumers in that group. And we're gonna have key value pairs to run in that message. And the message, you know, uh, typically have that key as in anything you want. This could be your username, your database submission ID, and so on. The third example we'll look at is the, the topic offsets. We'll look at how the offsets is being, uh, you know, uh, being incremented in Kafka and they're being in charge of distributing it on a per topic, per consumer group basis. And the fourth example would just be a simple Python library that does the previous three examples, and, uh, but in a uh, more Pythonic way. So first, let's look at how we could uh, install Kafka. Um, so this example is based on Ubuntu uh, 2004 LTS. If you have a different system, there's also a link at the top for you to look at if you have Mac, if you have different flavors of Linux, you could go ahead and consult that. It would be a little bit tricky if you want to install on Windows, but it's definitely uh, could be done. So first, what we want to do is we want to install Java because it's, you know, the core system is written in Java. So we have, in this case, we install Java 8. And then we we'll download the Kafka binary on tar on zip. Uh, what, we, what this has is a slash bin directory that you could uh, reference for all of the console commands later on. And it's recommended that you could, you know, you, you could definitely type out the full path, but it's recommended that you add this bin directory to your path so that uh, you don't have to pay, type out the full path. And it's also recommended to create a data directory for Zookeeper and the uh, Kafka. And we're gonna go ahead and this is how you reference those in the configuration file for both Zookeeper and uh, Kafka. So uh, all the data within Kafka and Zookeeper are written to the disk and therefore the implication is that you want to make sure that it's in a directory that is, uh, that is kept permanent and not being deleted every time you reboot. 
And here's the command that you start uh, Zookeeper in console. Here's another command that you start uh, Kafka in console. It is highly recommended that you start Kafka after you restart you start your Zookeeper and they're running at different ports. And here's how you produce your first topics, uh, how do you uh, produce your first topic? And you start your consumer, you start your producer and on the topic. Um, and then the next steps would be highly recommended if you want your um, Zookeeper and uh, Kafka to start automatically after reboot. So here are the, the links for the playlist for the four examples. The first example we'll see is how we could um, create a topic and have the consumers and the um, producers working together. So here, you know, definitely want to keep and make sure that your uh, Kafka and Zookeepers are working. Then you you have your consumer that's um, that's started via your console command. You subscribe to your topic of my first topic. And now you have your producer producing a bunch of messages in a customer hello world. If you look at the bottom, that's your producer that's producing messages. And you're at the top that you see these uh, messages. All right. Then we could look at the second example of how the consumers are, um, you can have multiple consumers in a consumer group. So here, uh, you know, we have the second topic that's being created and uh, we're going to clear that we're producing a bunch of messages to that topic and on the left you see that now that we have a consumer group and this first consumer is saying hey i want to consume all the messages from from the beginning so now i consume all the messages from there and now i have a second consumer joining a consumer group but it's not receiving any messages because all the message has been produced uh, being processed by the first consumer However, if I produce more messages to that uh, the topic, you can see as I produce more messages that the messages are being low balanced between the two consumer groups. All right, great. Moving on to the third example. If you look at the third example, in this example, we're really focusing on the offsets. So if you look at the offset, it's you know three, seven, and five for consumer group. And now what we're gonna do is we're basically repeating what we saw in the last example for the first uh, consumer group. And now you see the the you know the messages are being low balanced, and you see the current offsets are a little bit different between um, between what we saw before and what we see now, uh, because now we have more messages. So if we start a second consumer group, we could see that the consumer groups are uh, receiving those messages. And if we check that consumer group, then we could see the offsets are a little different as well. All right, so let's move on to the fourth example. You're telling me, hey, everything looks great in the console command, but that's not what we use in, uh, in the field. So yes, so now we could have a, a Python library that have both the producer and the consumer. And what we have is a, you know, the fixed key. However, in the value, it's a JSON value that we're to, taking a timestamp just to illustrate you know, uh, the new messages. So now I produce five messages to that topic. At the bottom, you'll see the consumer group. And once I start the consumer group, I saw the previous five messages that's produced. And if I produce five more messages, and boom, there it is. I could see those five different messages. So here's more network engineering use cases. We could use uh, engineering Kafka for secure autonomous operations, Cisco's real time ingestion, as well as the Nano. If you're interested in knowing more about Kafka, you could check out these links for documentation as well as the vast ecosystem of Kafka, such as Kafka Connect, Kafka Stream Security, and uh, KSQL, and so on. I want to thank you for spending the 20 minutes with me and hope you enjoy the presentation. And I'm excited for, to see what you could use Kafka for your application.